Various sports at RHS have made playoffs. What the athletes think of their accomplishments and their goals for the postseason. New club is on campus that competes in video game tournaments. Find out what exactly the Star League is all about. We've heard the term before, but not much else. What is the WASC and how it will affect Roseville High School? All this and more on an all-new TigerCast News, October 27, 2014. From Eye of the Tiger, this is TigerCast News. Broadcasting from Studio 403 in Roseville High School. Good morning, and welcome to an all-new TigerCast News. I'm Ben Judd. And I'm Austin Daly. Updating a story from earlier this month, there has been another tire slashing reported. Last Thursday, the junior class officers noticed a tire on their trailer of their homecoming float slashed. This most recent attack also affects the junior class's funding, as they are paying for the repairs. We will continue to update you on this developing story. Let's go over to Gustavo Di Vicenza for sports. Four varsity teams from this RHS qualified postseason play this week. First off, boys water polo has managed to splash their way into playoffs this year with a 9-1 record. They're currently tied for the first in the CBC and look to advance far this year in the playoff rounds. With an outstanding record of 10-2, the girls varsity volleyball team has surpassed competition and secured RHS spot in playoffs. They are looking forward for the challenge ahead. I think it feels great to go to playoffs and I also think that Oakmont will be our biggest competition this year. Girls golf has shredded through this competition this season and has successfully claimed their spot in playoffs. We talked to Anna Ostrom about the matches ahead. Um, Whitney High School is going to be our biggest competition because um, We've always been like neck and neck with them, but we've never actually beat them, but they're, it's very attainable. Girls tennis has finally made playoffs after 29 years. We talked to Elise Abel about what it's like to be the team that ended that streak. It feels really good to uh, make playoffs because we've been working really hard all season, and every day before practice, our coach just reminds us that we have to practice hard that day so we can make playoffs. Now let's go to Austin Daly with news. We have all sorts of different sports teams here at RHS, but this team takes a whole new aspect on the idea of a high school team. Ian Reamer has the story. Freshman Nathan Bonezio, sophomores Dustin Huen and Oliver Magaski, junior Alex Lee and se senior Taylor Cantwell all make up the Roseville High School Star League, a competitive team that has come together to represent RHS and defeat other challengers in the online game League of Legends. Although it's not a regular sports team, there are some com commonalities found in the mental aspects of participating in the game and the skills needed for it. Though we don't need the physical attributes of football players, we don't need to lift weights, stuff like that. We still need the mental cognition, the ability to work together and cohesively knit as a team. Honestly, you, got, you, got, you have to be good at the game, at least understand how to play it, right? And then you... I'd say teamwork and communication is very important. If you're not communicating with your team or you don't have good teamwork, then it's, not, it's just not going to work no matter how good you are. The group also has regular practices just like recreational sports. The practices are at, each, at our homes and they are uh, right after school until about 5.30 because uh, each of us has our own like, time restrictions and stuff. The Star League has similar advantages to participating in a sport, but with something else to look forward to when winning a tournament. It pretty much sets a goal. It allows us to be able to um, get scholarship for money for what we do and what we love, while it's improving our communication skills and the ability to work in a close-knit group. League of Legends is open and anyone interested, it requires no money whatsoever to form a team and participate in a tournament where winners receive scholarship money and many runners-up receive prizes as well. If anybody wants to join the team, whether it be Hearthstone, StarCraft 2, Dota, or League, just hit me up uh, through my League in-game summoner. This is the first year that the team has been together and they look forward to seeing how much this team can grow. The RHS dance team is currently selling keepsakes as a fundraiser to help support their team. We talked to Katrina Waters and Jordan Willis for more information. So dance team is fundraising. We're selling uh, keepsakes or ornaments. Um, and we're selling them so we can go to, um, if possible, Disneyland. And if not that, 
um, to perform at a Kings game. The ornaments are $18. The ornaments are made for any RHS team, but they, the proceeds go to our dance team. The order forms you can get from any dance team member or on the RHS website. Members of the Rose Club met with a group of senior citizens and a local historian last Thursday for an educational tour of historic Roseville. Sam Maley has the story. If you notice students missing from your first, second, or most of your third period last Thursday, their absence might not have been due to sickness or vacation, but because they were learning about Roseville's rich history on a tour around historic parts of the town. It's a town that's been around uh, a really long time. I mean, it's just cool to see how things have changed as time has progressed. Focusing mainly on the history of Old Town Roseville, the group was never more than a walking distance away from RHS, but took students deep into the past, learning about some of the oldest buildings in Roseville and ending the tour in the Carnegie Museum. There's only eight or nine like really important buildings in uh, Old Roseville, and we really broke down each one and kind of just like talked about uh, the history behind each one. Leading the group were senior citizens, some of which graduated from RHS that have lived in Roseville for most of their lives. Students were individually paired up with a senior citizen so they could learn about Roosevelt's history from a more personal perspective. The one thing that was cool about this and getting the first hand look at it uh, as opposed to just um, hearing it from a teacher or another source is that you got to hear about someone, the people's personal experiences growing up through this. Avid teacher and Rose Club advisor Dean Gadway believed the one-on-one -on -one interaction between the students and citizens gave the students a better insight on what historic Roseville was really like. Uh, anytime you get a chance to talk to somebody who lived the history, uh, that you deepen the understanding, you enrich in the understandings. Compared to the Roseville that some of the senior citizens grew up with, they've noticed a lot of change in parts of their hometown. Old Town has changed, even Vernon Street's changed. All the old schools now have become either churches or various different implemented places. The senior citizens hope to pass along an appreciation for Roseville down to the students attending the tour. I hope they take home of a love for this community, for the old homes that the people have had, and for the time people have spent here, people that have lived here Roseville has a really rich history. I'm glad those students got the chance to learn about it from people who lived here for so long. Two, one. You've probably heard the word WASC around campus lately, which is better defined as the Western Association of Schools and Colleges. It's an association that certifies high schools and is currently re reviewing and accrediting Roseville High School. We talked to Mrs. Powell about the association and what it has to do with RHS this year. WASC is, well it stands for Western Association of Schools and Colleges. And basically, it is the commission that accredits all the schools and um, colleges in the western part of the United States. Roseville received the maximum six-year accreditation last time and is looking to do so again this year. This year, the Culinary Garden is back. We talked to one of Roseville's culinary teachers, Mrs. Ash, for more information. Over the summer, some of the plants in the garden were cut down. Over the summer, um, we asked the uh, maintenance and grounds keepers to clear out the garden. Um, we didn't intend for them to take the, the big plants, spe specifically the um, rosemary that's in the back. Um, so they kind of clear cut everything. That was our understanding that they were going to clear cut it down to about four or five inches above ground level. Um, but they ended up taking out by root a lot of the plants um, that we didn't intend to. So um, it's a good and bad thing because we uh, also last year in the spring we were able to get a grant funded for our garden, um, so we're, we're going to make some um, trellising and have some, some vines and things like that, so we're replacing with veg vegetables, more edible plants, rather than just landscape plants. Now that the plants have grown back, the students use them in a variety of dishes. So right now we're doing uh, Indian, so we're adding like a ton of spices to our chicken, you know, to our veggies. We make our own curry. Curry is not the same. It's not just one spice. It's a bunch of spices mixed together. So we put like, you know, paprika, cayenne pepper, some, what is it, coriander, kanamon, some like that. It's just a bunch of spices. The students have also learned how to tend to the garden so they can harvest spices every day. We cook with them all the time. So the culinary students will come out here and harvest fresh rosemary. They'll harvest the, the chives and oregano, basil. Um, we use all of these in our cooking almost every day. 
Auditions for Roseville High School's spring drama performance, Girl Child Soldier, started on Friday and will continue into November. Ultimate Frisbee, a new club at RHS, has now begun. Student and president of the club, Jeremiah Jose, has a few things to say about the club. Ultimate Frisbee is, it's like a cross between lacrosse and basketball and football and soccer. Really, it's a continuous play sport and no contact and you pass the Frisbee back and forth till you score a goal. Ever since freshman year, I've always just wanted to play Ultimate Frisbee with someone. And so I just decided to start a club and share, share, I don't know, share the game. That's it for us today on TigerCast News. And remember, we're always on at eyeofthetigernews.com. We'll see you next time.